My name is Jake Diddle. I'm the assistant project lead uh, on the mule deer nutrition and predation study. We're currently here in the Malheur forest. Uh, we are capturing fawns this week uh, as part of this study. Um, we are interested in what their survival rates are uh, throughout the year after birth and tying that back to the mother's health and body condition uh, that we captured in the winter and scored on that. We uh, get alerts from a device called what we call a VIT. It's a vaginal transponder. So when we catch the adult does, we check to see if they're pregnant. And if they are pregnant, we put into the device that's very similar to an IUD. Um, those devices, when the doe gives birth, are expelled and they send a signal to her GPS collar that then sends a signal to my cell phone saying that a birth event was probably likely. That VIT also gives off a VHF frequency that we can use radio telemetry to find the birth site. And then we just start looking for the fawns visually by circling around that birth site. We can do it in multiple habitats throughout the study area. We're currently in some alpine forest. Uh, we also do some sage steppe, some alpine meadow, and even some lower uh, riparian areas. So when we're approaching uh, the birth site, we're really trying to be quiet to do uh, the least amount of disturbance as possible. Um, we want to try to see the doe. She's going to be very close to those fawns. Uh, one of their, their main defense strategies when they're so young at this age, because those fawns are incapable of running away, they're still learning to walk, is the doe to kind of stash them or hide them someplace nearby and then try to lure us away. So we really try hard to sneak up, get eyes on her, and see if we can see where they're caching those fawns and then moving into that spot. Uh, we don't want to leave our scent or minimize how much scent and disturbance, so we always wear gloves when we're handling the fawns uh, to minimize how much scent we leave on them. Uh, and then we're collecting very few samples from them. So we're getting a hair sample, which will help us get uh, DNA and genetic information from them. Uh, we are weighing them. That is a good indicator of how healthy that fawn is at birth. Uh, heavier fawns are generally healthier. Um, we are putting a GPS collar on them that will allow us to know where they are once we release them. And if they do end up dying uh, from predation at some point, we can find that and investigate the cause of that mortality. Um, we're also putting in a more permanent ear tag on those fawns. That allows us to, if we recapture that deer in the future, we can tie it back to that individual. So the collars that we are putting on, they will eventually fall off those fawns as they grow bigger. So they are able to stretch a little bit and then at a certain point they reach their maximum and they just fall off. So that ear tag allows us to identify that individual if we recatch them. Mule deer populations have been declining throughout the West. Um, we're interested in trying to find out another possible avenue of why that uh, decline may be happening in fawn survival. So we are not only um, collaring the adult deer to see uh, why they are dying or mortalities are happening, but by doing these fawns, we're getting another stage of that life cycle that may be really important. Uh, we can tie back the health of these fawns to the mother's body condition, we can uh, look at the landscape where these fawns are being born to see if the forage is uh, good or if there's differences across the landscape. And then we can, by having these GPS collars on these fawns, know when they're being predated upon and identify who is uh, predating those fawns and how frequently it's happening. So one reason it's really important to monitor fawn survival uh, and try to determine what is limiting the recruitment in the mule deer populations is because if we want to manage and improve these populations, we need to know what to attack or what to try to manage. So currently we don't have a good understanding on what is causing such low recruitment in these fawns. So the goal of this project, or part of the goal of this project, is to identify that and then maybe make informed decisions in the future on where the management plans go. So when we're investigating these potential birth sites of fawns, we never know what we're going to find. We're hoping it's going to be some live fawns we could put collars on. That won't always be the case. Uh, predators can detect fawns rather quickly and sometimes get there before we do. Today we found a mule deer fawn um, that had been predated. Uh, at this point we're not 100% confident with what did that, but um, we know that all the native carnivore species uh, impact uh, mule deer fawns. When we find uh, remains of a fawn, uh, we have several steps that we're gonna take uh, to collect various data points. Some of those data points are gonna be um, genetic material uh, 
that could potentially link us to the predator. So for that, we're using DNA swabs to uh, hopefully pick up some saliva that we could link back to um, the carnivore species that fed on that animal. Um, we're also looking for things like bite wounds, um, other feeding characteristics that um, various predator species have. Once we've collected the samples, we send them to labs for uh, various analysis and hopefully we get back some positive results and uh, we can fill in our, the missing gaps in our data.